that's uh, just a little peek ahead into what we're going to talk about today. Um, so I'm a PhD student now at Kent University, and this is uh, some of the research work that we've been doing with collaboration with many other people, of course. And this is a visualization tool that is a little bit different from the talk we saw previously. Previously, the talk uh, Scalasco was looking at the MPI stack and looking at multiple nodes. Here, we're going to take a dive into a single node, and we're going to look at performance of cores and multi-core systems because they're getting quite complicated these days. Okay, great. Uh, okay, so what are the major goals of Sniper? Well, Sniper is our tool that we develop at, at Ghent University. And the tool is, uh, the main goal for us is to figure out what the performance is going to look like for next generation machines. So say there's this new Xeon Phi coming out. I've heard about it. I want to maybe try to change the settings on my computer and see how my HPC workload is going to uh, perform on that new computer. Or, uh, so that's one type of thing you can do. Um, another thing you can do is do hardware software co-design. So this is something that uh, we were really lucky because we were, had a, we were working closely with Intel. And the idea there was, can we change the software? Can we change the hardware at the same time? And now we can do better than changing only one or the other alone. And so we'll go into this a little bit in some of our research. But one of the other things that, uh, and I guess one of the things that I'm targeting today to talk about most, is how is my application performing? And this goes back to the insight that we heard about the, at the last talk. But the insight into the application is can be very difficult to understand. What's, what's, why is my application not performing as, as well as I expected? So we're gonna, we're gonna get, go into a little bit of uh, detail on that. Okay, so what we do at our research group at Ghent University is we try to design tomorrow's processors using today's hardware with the simulator. But today we're gonna talk about optimizing tomorrow's software for tomorrow's processors. And simulation, and that's what Sniper is, it's a simulator, is one promising solution. So now what we can do is we can have detailed analysis of our application, of our hardware, and we can see how they interact. We can do architectural exploration, and we can do early software optimization before the uh, hardware is available. Okay, but come on, sniper and simulation, this doesn't make any sense. Why can't I just use performance counters? Come on, they're there, they're, they're really great, right? Why can't I just use cache grind and see how my cache misses look? This shouldn't be a problem, right? Well, it turns out that using these methods can be really good for software optimization, but difficult to do a hardware software optimization when you're, when you're trying to uh, look at performance. And the problem is that not all cache misses are alike. And so this is basically computer architecture 101 here, where sometimes you have long latency loads, and sometimes the cache misses are uh, quite uh, not very important. And so it doesn't really affect the performance all the time. Modern out-of-order cores, they can overlap these misses. So you don't really know which ones are important and which ones are not. And both the core performance and the cache performance matters. So just because we have a cache simulator doesn't mean that we'll understand how the core performance looks. And actually, they're really tightly inter uh, intertwined. So that's why we developed Sniper. So node complexity is also increasing. So we have large changes happening in HPC nodes. We have large numbers of threads with the Xeon Phi, for example. We have cache coherent NUMA. Um, and now what we want to do is we want to optimize for efficiency of our software. So one of the trends that we notice in, in, as, computer architect, as computer architects is that we've seen these numbers of cores per node increasing. So back in the day, 2001 was the first dual core processor, the Power 4 from IBM. And the first x86 dual core was in 2005 from AMD. Then uh, fast forward to 2011, we saw 10 core processors. And now we have 60 plus cores with Knight's Corner. And then Intel just recently announced the Knight's Landing uh, processor. And my guess could be that maybe they'll believe and see more cores than what we saw in the first uh, version of the Xeon Phi. But we also have many different architecture options. So this is a typical processor that, uh, a typical processor configuration that you would see in a, uh, a multiprocessor uh, node. This is a four socket node. 
and each each socket has four cores and the sharing in L3. So this is a typical configuration of the machine that you'll see in Node. But what we also see are things like this, which are much different from the typical processor architectures. And this is uh, very similar to the Xeon Phi type architecture. Okay. Another thing that we've seen, and uh, today we've seen a lot about, we've heard a lot about this, is future systems and being diverse. So we have varying processor speed, varying, varying architect, uh, microarchitectures. We also have heard a lot about failure rates. I won't talk much about that uh, in this talk, but these are something that simulators allow you to do much better than uh, being able to do this on the hardware itself. Um, because of NUMA effects, I'm not sure, uh, I won't talk about NUMA too much, but basically now you have memory that doesn't always look like it's the same distance. So basically you can have some memory accesses that appear to be much further, it's much longer to get to that data. So now what we need are solutions, both in the software space and the hardware space, to solve these challenges. And what we do, our work originated from analytical models. So what this means is understanding your hardware, understanding your application, and coming up with formula that sort of represents the performance of this application. But that doesn't allow us, at the current state of the art for analytical models, does not provide the level of detail that we need for today's complex applications and complex microarchitectures. So we propose fast and accurate simulation. And I mentioned pre-silicon software optimization. But also, uh, today, I'd like to just focus on software optimization and software insight. Um, cycle accurate simulation tends to be too slow for exploring this design space. So there are two types of, well, there are a few types of uh, Simulation. So simulation means emulation, basically. We're pretending that we're a, new, a different type of machine that hasn't been invented yet. And you could do it at the cycle level, very precise, or you could take the abstraction up a little bit, and you can do some approximations, and you can get very close to the result of a cycle level simulation. So what we did in Sniper was we sort of raised the level of abstraction to give us a very similar result, a very accurate result, but in a much faster way. Okay. So here's Sniper. It uses a hybrid simulation approach. We're a parallel simulator. Uh, we have a core model that's analytical, uh, based on analytical models. Uh, what we are is we validate against hardware, but we're also pin-based. So I'm not sure uh, if, you, if people here are familiar with pin. Pin is a, a dynamic instrumentation tool. What you can do is you can take pin, you can sort of wrap it around your application, and then you can gather statistics. Uh, and so what Sniper does is it uses PIN as one of the front ends to gather statistics about your application and model these new architectures. And we scale with the number of cores, and you can download it uh, right now at snipersim.org. Okay, we've got lots of fun features. We support MPI, we support 64-bit, we're parallel, and we're going to go into some important things here like CPI stacks and interactive visualizations, and that's what I showed earlier. Um, there's some things here that are a little bit technical that I won't touch on today. Uh, but, okay, I have to say, Sniper isn't perfect. It's not for everybody. We're user level. So this might not be the best match for workloads with significant OS involvement. That means databases. That means web servers. This, 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 uh, this simulator would not be good if you're trying to simulate a web server application. Um, I'll skip over this. We use a high abstraction core model. This means that if you want to understand the nitty gritty details of a processor, you probably don't want to use our simulator. But most people here want to understand their application, so that's why our simulator uh, will work for you. We're x86 only, but it turns out that all of these limitations are okay for the HPC space. And so that's why we developed Sniper, and that's what we're talking about. Okay, so this is a little bit of history of Sniper. So we released our first version in 2011, and we've made many revisions since then, adding lots of fun features. And we've got around 700 plus downloads from researchers. Some people are searching for shoot 'em up games, so but we just discard those from the download that count. Okay, so now I want to talk a little bit about the main feature. What, for, uh, what I feel the main feature is for this community of Sniper, and that's a visualization and understanding the application and providing insight. So when uh, so we worked closely with a master student uh, a year or two ago, 
And the question we were, the first question he uh, proposed to us was, well, come on, this is the kind of output that you get from Stipe, but it's not very interesting. Who wants to read this data, all these numbers? Uh, I'm sorry, we gotta, we gotta do something about this. So um, what we did was the very first type of visualization that we introduced with Sniper is called the cycle stack or CPI stack. And uh, basically the problem is modern out of order microprocessors are very difficult to understand. Where are we losing cycles? Why is it slow? I don't understand what's going on. So a cycle stack or a CPI stack is one way to understand where our lost cycles are going. And so what we have is we have uh, different components that represent the different reasons why we lose performance. So there's a base component, which really represents the fastest speed of the uh, microprocessor. And then we have the branch predictor, and we have some instruction caches and other caches, and then uh, there could be other components as well. So this is a really good start. This is a single thread here, and it shows the components. Here we can see there's a quite a large component that is a L2 cache. That means that we hit in the L2 cache, and th that hitting in the L2 cache causes us this much performance penalty. And that's about 33% of this. Okay, so the next step, well, why don't we look at it over multiple threads? So I have a, a lot of names here on the right, but uh, basically we we'll want to focus on one component, which is this, these red bars right here, in the middle here. So what we see is these four threads on the left have a very small component on red and a very big component on this dark blue. So if we look over here, the red component is off socket memory and the blue is a sync waiting in synchronization because of a barrier. So it turns out that the data is residing on the first socket. So the simulator can tell you with these cycle stacks, <coughs> ah, I can access the data quite easily, but because of NUMA effects, this socket, this one over here, is unable to get that data as fast. And that's where the performance, is, the performance hit is uh, occurring. There are other uh, interesting things that you can look at. So for example, you can compare different input sets. And you can compare scaling from eight cores, for example, to 16 cores to see how much time you're spending in synchronization versus actually doing things, so actually uh, doing computation. OK. So what I want to do is I want to uh, go to our uh, current most advanced visualization feature of Sniper. And what this is is a website that's automatically generated after you run your simulation. And it contains a few different things. And what I was surprised when we started this research work, I was surprised at how difficult it was to get a simplified view. We started off and we had all these buttons and, and graphs and charts and things like that. But actually taking things away was much more difficult than I expected. So we have a few different components here. We have the main view in the middle. And this represents time on the x-axis and the CPI or the lost cycles. Where, are, where am I losing time? Why is my CPU slow? On the left here, we have some options. On the right, we have different uh, components. And what these components are color-coded in the most recent version, such that the red components means this is lost cycles due to the core. Yellow is branch predictor. Green is because of the memory subsystem or cache hierarchy. And blue is synchronization with other threads or other cores. Uh, down here, we just have uh, the performance of the uh, system in instructions per, uh, uh, instructions per cycle. So this is a, a metric that uh, computer architects like to use. But what's also <laughs> cool about Sniper is we've got the performance. What about energy? And this was touched upon uh, in earlier, the earlier presentation as well. What we're able to do is we can integrate Sniper <coughs> with other, um, some other academic tools, in this case, MCAT. Uh, and MCPAD is a tool that allows you to do some high-level exploration and understanding of your, of your application of your microarchitecture and see where your power is going. So in this case, now we have a stack, very similar to a performance stack. But in this case, we're looking at power. Or in this case, it's, yes, power. And where the power is going during each of these, uh, over time. And there was a, another interesting feature, which uh, I thought was cool, but uh, isn't as um, 
doesn't have as much benefit as the previous two features, and that is a 3D view of the performance of your course. So now you can get a quick and easy view and see which cores here on the z-axis are doing better or worse. And in this case, we have a pretty homogeneous application, so we don't see any dips. But it's possible that, for example, uh, with the example we gave before, you'll see a dip in performance because of off-chip accesses, and you'd see the dip here with the y-axis would dip down and you see much lower performance. Okay. So, so first we have performance analysis of the application, but we also have uh, the view of this system. What, what does the system that we're simulating look like? So this is an automatic topology generation. These are all the microarchitectural structures, the nitty gritty details of your computer. So we have the different levels of cache, the L2 cache, the shared L3, and the DRAM. And what happens is if you mouse over one of these components, it will show you a uh, spark line of the activity for that component over time. So now you can go in and you can look at the different components and you can do comparisons and see how the application is using your microarchitecture. So then we have a, um, a little bit more experimental research that we were working on. And the idea of, of, for this research is how can we analyze the entire application in a more straightforward way so that we can uh, understand what the, what's going wrong in the application. So what we, would so what we have here on the x-axis is time, and on the y-axis is number of instructions. So normally you would expect some sort of linear behavior to occur where uh, if you have more instructions, then it'll just take a linear amount of time to execute those instructions. But what happens is there are some outliers. And that means that you're spending more time in these uh, functions compared to other functions. So maybe these are the functions that you would want to spend some time to investigate and to do some research on. Okay. Um, I just also want to touch on the roofline model. So this is a very interesting model that was developed in 2009 uh, from uh, David Patterson and some, uh, some other uh, folks. And what, what, they what they came up with was very interesting, and this is for high-performance computing workloads. So what we have is we have a roofline model consists of two components, and these are the maximum obtainable performance that you can achieve on a node. And we have one, it's in basically the intersection of two lines, the peak memory bandwidth, which is this line, and the peak floating point for performance of your core. And so with the intersection of these two lines, we have this space here, and we have a few functions. Each of these dots represents a function. And the closer we get to the, the top of this performance or bandwidth number is how close we are to the theoretical maximum performance of this processor. And so now we can have an understanding, OK, how well are we doing? Is there any room to grow here? And now we can, we can use this uh, methodology to determine that. Um, got a few more minutes. So what I want to just touch on is some of our research that we've been working on in hardware software optimization. Uh, the main idea is if you have Xeon Phi style cores, for example, is there a way to do hardware software optimization such that you can uh, have a better performance result? And what I mean by that is, say you've got lots of options. You've got small cores and stacked RAM and slow, big cores. Which, which architecture do you choose? And there's just a lot of options now. Xeon Phi, GPUs, uh, although Cypher doesn't have those GPUs yet. But the, basically what I'm saying is there's a large variety today. And it's getting even more complicated to understand. So what we do is we use Sniper to understand the, different, the complexity and then to make it easy for us to understand what the right solution is. Um, so for the HPC crowd, what we did was we uh, looked at a stencil computation. And what this stencil computation does is you're basically doing heat transfer between a, a 2D mesh. So basically each of these points can transfer heat uh, to other uh, components of the mesh. But maybe you want to go ahead in time, a few steps in time. And you want to compute instead of just one iteration, Maybe you want to compute two or three or four. Okay, fine, you can do that. But what that means is you need extra data 
around the block that you're computing in order to uh, move in time without doing computation, uh, without doing extra communication. So the point was, before every time step, you'd have to communicate with your neighbors. Now what we're saying is, let's not communicate with the neighbors. Let's do extra computation. And before that, we're doing wasted computation. Because my neighbor is these dark black dots. My neighbor is actually also doing that, that work. So does it make sense for both of us to be doing that work? Well, actually, it, it might. So here we have a roofline model again. And here we have the floating point performance and the bandwidth. And what we see here is, as we increase the arithmetic intensity, what that means is basically as we do more redundant computation, at some point we get diminishing returns, which means we're doing too much computation, and we're, we do much redundant computation, we're not making that, uh, we're not making up the lost uh, performance. So basically around two, so doing two time steps makes sense, but any more, uh, not, doesn't make any more sense. Okay, and uh, basically to summarize, if you do co-optimization, you can do better than uh, a single, uh, optimizing just software and just um, hardware alone. Okay, and I just want to finish up by saying uh, Sniper is available to download. You can download it today. We have a pretty easy way to get you started, and we have a pretty active mailing list. We try to respond uh, fairly quickly. And um, if there's any questions, I'd love to answer them. Thank you. All right, any questions? How do you correlate this information with uh, specific functions or uh, source code lines? Is that possible at all? So the, um, the roof line model that we showed a few slides ago, that is function based. What we were looking into next is how can you go even deeper? And maybe you can go into the source. Now, the, uh, this maybe goes back to the comment that was made in the previous talk, which was, well, do we really want one, one platform to do everything? We already have tools that do uh, analysis of code line uh, and performance per code line. So the problem with that, we could do it. I'm afraid that it might slow down the simulator too much. And therefore, all the benefits of being a fast simulator, a parallel simulator, a high, higher level simulator, we lose those benefits by moving in that direction. So I think it's possible, yes, if we thought about it, but right now we have to. And we know if people are actually doing that and what is their experience, but people are using like different tools and correlating the data. Correlating the data. I don't like using different tools, one that you can perform a source line and then there is a sniper of the tool and correlating it. So, so they're, they're correlating different applications, or yeah, you, you you run your application with each of them, you run your application with a uh, sniper, and you right. run it with one of the that each of them are related to a different sniper. So we've done a validation against hardware, if that's what you mean. So we've taken the microarchitectural settings of a Mayhello machine, for example. We plug that into Sniper, and then you see the results are very similar. And I don't I don't have the results here, but the accuracy numbers are quite good. I think he means if you use different tools, how can you align the results, right? Yeah. I think that's very difficult. Yeah, that's that's. A, I think that's a that's a. <laughs> I think that's a broader problem, right? Because different tools have different expertise, and they make different trade-offs. So therefore, they their accuracy will be different for different components. So then, how do you compare the accuracies? It, that's a. I think. No, yeah. Maybe we'll take it offline. Yeah. Someone else? Yeah. Good. So you've got uh, you've verified the simulator for Alan yes. and what, there was something new. Are there yeah. any plans to verify a simulation for something like the Steam on Fire? Yeah, that would be uh, really. Well, right now there aren't plans to validate against Steam on Fire, but that totally is possible. Because it's yeah. 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 Yeah, exactly right. So it's a definitely a great uh, suggestion. I think we can go there. So we have a validate against the on five, but we have configuration options that allows you to configure for Z5. But yeah, that's a good point. Validating for that would be a good next step. Another um, small question as well. You mentioned we have NPI support as well. Yeah. On node and yes. Not off node. Okay.
is what we use the shared memory interfaces of MPI to do MPI on node MPI. 